Hello, and welcome back to the Google Search News. I hope life is treating you reasonably well wherever you are. My name is John Mueller. I'm your host today, here from Google Switzerland. Today, we have news about Search Console, Search Results, Google Trends, and, of course, a short mention of AI. How could it already be so late in the year? Time is fleeting. What does that even mean? Anyway, let's delve right in. First up, some cool Search Console news, namely recommendations. This makes it easier to spot patterns and get insights about your site. They're especially helpful if you're not a regular user. For example, it could tell you that all structured data of one type is incorrectly implemented. Recommendations have not yet been rolled out to all websites and are only shown when relevant. We're still working on these, so please send us feedback if you see something surprising. Also let us know if there's something new for us to add there as well. It's still early days for these recommendations. We plan to add more over time. Also in Search Console, we updated the performance report to make it easier to keep filters and settings when switching websites. The performance report gives you information on how and when your site is shown in Google search results. This particular change came out of feedback from you all, so thank you for that. We have a few more things planned for the performance report, so stay tuned. And talking about search results, Google removed the cached page link and the cache operator. This change doesn't affect your site's visibility in search, so there's nothing for you to do. We also added a link to the Internet Archive with this update. The Internet Archive is an American nonprofit that, among other things, crawls and stores copies of web pages. To see how Google sees your pages, use Search Console. With the removal of cache pages, the No Archive meta tag no longer has any functionality. We removed it from our documentation. It's fine to keep it on pages. It doesn't do anything for Google Search, but you might use it elsewhere. Also, in the search results, you may find pages with an SRSLTID parameter. This comes from Merchant Center's auto-tagging for e-commerce sites. It's used to give site owners conversion metrics. This parameter is added after the search results are complete. It doesn't come from or affect crawling or indexing, so it's not possible to control it with canonicalization, robots.txt, or meta tags. If you want to toggle auto-tagging for your site, I've included a link to the Help Center in the description. Google Trends is up next. Google Trends has updated some of its functionality, in particular, the Trending Now experience. This helps you to discover emerging trends and patterns in real time. With this update, you have access to fresher data for more countries and regions. We've recently put out a video series that covers some of the Google Trends functionality. In particular, there's a video and documentation for search marketing and SEOs. It gives you some ideas on how you can use trends to better understand your site's users and to find topics that you could prepare for. I do want to caution that it's easy to go overboard with tools like these, you don't have to create pages to cover every possible related search terms. It's important that the content which you publish actually adds value to the web overall, and that it doesn't just repeat what others have said. Be selective, focus on your own expertise, focus on your users that are likely to be relevant for your business. And now, over to some cool things from the SEO community. First up is a fun tune AI generated by Alize Bodez. I'll link to these in the description below. I realize using generative AI for something creative is a bit controversial, but I thought this was fun. If you're an SEO or digital marketer and making music with AI or not, please drop your link in the comments here. I'd love to take a listen. Next, I found Crystal Carter's presentation on brand recognition for generative AI really interesting. We'll see how it all pans out, but it's awesome to see folks brainstorm and talk about the possibilities. And getting back to more traditional SEO work, Raquel Gonzalez wrote a nice guide on international SEO mistakes and fixes. International SEO is hard, and I was happy to see my personal pet peeve mentioned GeoIP redirects. What's your personal pet peeve with international SEO? Let me know in the comments. And just a bit more. Let's see. 
We've updated our pages for video SEO, title links, Google crawlers, and core updates. Let us know with the feedback links if we can make things even clearer. Also in the documentation, we clarified that indexing API is really only for the content types mentioned and that URLs with a hash symbol can't be used for canonicalization. On YouTube, we launched a second season of SEO Made Easy and a series of Google Trends tutorials. Then, the team has put on a number of events in new places from Malaysia to Turkey. It's been great meeting folks. Where should we go next year? And last but not least, we added support for the AVIF image format in Google Images. Well, there you have it. This episode of Google Search News is now complete. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this video was useful, and please add feedback and comments here. We read them all. If you subscribe to this channel, we'll let you know when another episode is ready. Bye.